Hey everybody and welcome back to Jenny LeClue. Get this started. Detective for hire. Jenny had saved up the whole summer to place an ad in the local paper, but no one had answered it until now. What could this new case be? Her imagination ran wild, picturing the possibilities. And so, after helping Mom at Gumboldt College, she hurried to the pier at Lake Nowhere to rendezvous with her new client and crack another thrilling case. Except I believe, uh, madam, we were supposed to go directly home? All right. Lovely visuals here. I, I like it. It's very cute. As Jenny near the edge of the woods. I love the the words hanging up, hanging in the air there. She suddenly heard a strange sound. Um, she heard the sound of a a wrench falling from the trees. What the? Hey, kid. Watch where you're going. Hey. We're walking along a path here. You're the one dropping wrenches on top of people. Hey, screw you. Your wrench nearly cracked my head open. Oh no. It's not damaged, is it? Your head? Or my head? Or your wrench? That's my lucky wrench. Yeah, lucky it didn't kill me. How old is Jenny LeClue supposed to be? I mean, I was thinking that she's like 10 years old or, you know, young. But I don't think a youngster yells, screw you, at people. That's... She's a... If she is saying that, she's a very precocious, precocious child, huh? Yeah, lucky it didn't kill me. When's this upgrade going to be finished anyways? Look, kid. I just go where they tell me. Every night, another power surge. Every morning, another part of the grid fried. And I'm out here, fixing it. Did I get any thanks? No. What's causing, what's causing all the outages? At the moment, a little red-headed girl. Now throw me my wrench, kid. Let's ask more questions. We're a detective. Looks like I have all the leverage. So tell me, what exactly is taking so long with all these repairs? Apart from shoddy workmanship, that is. Hey, we're busting our butts to keep your lights on. These lines should be lasting for decades, but they're burning out after just a few weeks. Sounds like someone's drawing a lot of current through them. It's the strangest thing. Anyway, toss me my wrench. But be careful. It's a family heirloom. Yeah, here you go. Fine, I've got bigger fish to fry. Thanks, kid. Oh. What am I supposed to be finding around here? Oh, what's that? Crap. Of the postcard, I guess. Like, you do tell me if there's something I need to pop up. Like, I don't need to just be looking at everything. As Jenny stepped out of the dark forest, she saw warm sunlight reflecting off the cool lake. And next to that, something even cooler. Keith Strousberry. Come on, Keith. Dance like you bean it. Not so much grinding. Oh, Keith, what are you doing? Not everyone saw it, but to Jenny, there was something special about Keith. He's just happy being himself. Nothing seemed to bother him. Not even having to do a dance in a costume for a dollar an hour. All right, let me mute you just one second, please. All right, sorry, I had to sneeze there, but I left you looking at the 
beautiful sign of Keith doing a little dance here. But Jenny was not so laid back. Not when it comes to standing up for a friend. Especially her only friend. We're coming. We're coming to save you, Keith. Restore Keith's dignity. Or punch girls in the face? No, just restore Keith's dignity, I guess. I think there's been enough dancing for one day, don't you? Hey, Jenny. Hello, Susan. Actually, I prefer Susie. Busy laughing while others earn a living, Susan. Not everyone goes. Got, not everyone's got your dad's money, I guess. Jenny, hi. Dean Strasberry, son of Dean Strasberry, benchwarmer, Gumbolt Moonbeams, best friend ever. Tall and handsome, with intense, mysterious eyes. Cool should have been his middle name. Instead of Tarquin. Tarquin? Don't know that name. But Keith was so cool, he didn't even mind. Give me one minute, I'm just finishing. Sure, don't let me interrupt your work. My shift ends in 15 minutes, I know, I'm early. I'm meeting a client over at the dock. Paid case. Could be big, real big. Let me mute you again one second. Sorry, so many sneezes today. All right. Couldn't be as big as her head. Now come on, Nancy. Or Sharon. Or Karen, whatever your name is, I don't know. Wow, that's really impressive? Maybe. All I care about is keeping this town crime free. The only crime here is that haircut. Yeah, you laugh it up now. Back in a minute, Keith. I'll have the usual. Let's go for the sweet tooth. Six sugars, a splash of milk, and a dash of cinnamon. You got it. Hey, uh, Gumbolt College Radio. How about now? Move to the left a bit. What is he doing up there? Not now, kid. We're busy. Any better? No, keep going. Now? There you go. Yes, it's working. Hold it right there. That's what all the fuss is about? Not this guy again. What is that? Whatever it is, it's not my music. Maybe it's... Jazz? I'm trying to listen. Yoosh! I'm the DJ. I'm in charge. It's actually a number station? Like an old style uh, spy uh, radio. When's this party getting started, boys? Oh, uh, just a few more minutes. How are we supposed to dance to this? I think we're losing them. Another station must be interfering with the signal. But there aren't any other stations in Arthurton. Wait, all these wires must be acting as a giant antenna. Jenny listened closely to the mysterious transmission. It was like no other radio broadcast she'd heard before. Hold it steady. Sorry, I'm trying. It's just getting worse. You might as well come down. No, wait! I can almost make out what they're saying. It's just a list of numbers, Jenny. But just like that, the sound faded away. What did you do? It's no use. Come on. We've got to get this equipment back to the AV department by six. Jenny was so lost in contemplation, she'd almost forgotten the case at hand. My client! I'm supposed to meet her at the dock. What's that? Danger, no swimming. Sounds safe? Yep. 
Hmm, how do I get this ladder down? Let's uh, shake it. That did not work. A ladder that doesn't ladder. Let's kick it. I'm getting a kick out of this. Alright, so it didn't work. No, I'm sorry. No. no. Uh, I accidentally clicked it again, so I'll kick it again. That didn't work. Alright, so let's move on. Like, what? We can't go through the trash? It was worth a shot. Uh, you're not a her. Well, I shouldn't say that unless I've actually talked to you, but... You don't look like our client. Aha! I've got you this time, you slippery fella. Ah, shucks. Just another boot. Hey, don't put it back in the water, dude! Take it out and throw it in the trash with you on the way back. Come on, that's... That's like double littering. Ahem. Excuse me, Mr. Humdrum. Oh my, if it isn't little Jenny LeClue. What a glorious day, don't you think? As far as Jenny was concerned, small talk was like a second pair of underpants. Uncomfortable and completely unnecessary. But Mom always says, create a good rapport and they'll reveal everything to you. So she gave it a shot. Let's talk about fishing. How's the fishing? The fishing's great, but the catching is bad. Ha ha ha. Yeah, dad jokes, huh? All I'm getting are old boots and strange bits of metal. What kind of strange bits of metal? But just look out there, Jenny. She's got that wonderful afternoon glow. You're talking about the lake? No one knew why the lake glowed at night. And few were brave enough to swim its murky waters. What lay beneath its depths was the stuff of myth and legend. Somewhere out there lies the giant red herring, or so they say, the red herring. But no one's ever caught one. Sounds fishy to me. Well, if she's out there, I'll catch her someday. Great. Well, now that we have a good rapport, where can I find Mrs. Humdrum? Why, she's down there, on the ridge. Only one problem. I think the ladder is broken. Ah, yes. There's a knack to it. First you shake it. Then you kick it. And then you push it. Sounds unnecessarily complicated. I'll join you down there in a bit. Just have to sort my tackle out. Okay, we're not going to talk about your tackle, Mr. Humdrum. Um, but I think the... Let's talk about the lake and all the signs that are like, no swimming. So it reminds me of this song by Voltaire. I don't recall the name of the song itself, but it's about a bay that is supposed to be, supposedly has like an evil sea monster that's going to kill, you know, any fisherman or anyone that sails into the bay, the sea monster will sink your ship. But really, it's a harmless whale and the narrator of the song has put the signs up to scare people off so they don't hunt the whale. And I think that's kind of what's going on here is these no swimming. Like, really, it's like, don't find out about our secret hideout under the lake. But we're going to tell you that it's totally dangerous, so you stay out. Uh, you first you shake it. Then you kick it. Then you push it. There you go. Aha! Uh -huh. That did the trick. Hello, madam. I'm here about the case. Rendezvous with Gail. Mrs. Humdrum, I presume? Oh, hello. Er, you. Yeah, us. Jenny LeClue. Nice to meet you, Mrs. Humdrum. I'm the private detective you contacted? Uh, let's show her our credentials, please. Jenny LeClue, Le at your service. I'm here to solve your case. Who is it, Dan? It's Jenny, dear, the LeClue girl. She doesn't see so well without her glasses. Oh, hello, Jenny. I mean, didn't we say that? 
You're, n you're not a trifle deaf, are you? Because we, we called out who we were. I'm afraid I don't see so well without my glasses, but what about your hearing, madam? Nothing wrong with her hearing, though. Yeah. So, she does have hearing problems, huh? Mr. Humdrum, she just doesn't want to admit it. What did she say? Uh, I said there's nothing wrong with your hearing, dear. Oh, no, thank you. I've already eaten. I believe you have a case for me? We do, we do. Great, so what's the trouble? Haunted by the ghost of a former lover? Worried you're being poisoned by a mad uncle? Something so dark and gruesome I can't even begin to imagine the horror? Well, I've lost my reading glasses. Oh, and there it was, a real case. A confounding mystery to challenge Jenny's brilliant mind. Uh, is it in your pocket, madam? Sigh. Thought this was finally going to be a good one. What do you think, Jenny? Can you help? Sure, Mr. Humdrum. I'm going to need to ask you a few questions. A case of the missing glasses. Yep, no glasses. Missing or stolen? Recent? Jenny recognized the distinctive indentations left behind by a pair of spectacles. She must have been wearing them recently. You still have marks from your glasses on the bridge of your nose. You probably lost them within the last day or two. Oh, I never would have thought of that. When do you last remember wearing them? I'm really not sure. Dan, you had them at your Tuesday book club. Oh yes, we were reading Fifty Shady Graves. I've never been interrogated before. This is such fun. Yeah, you say that now, madam, but you just wait till you're the suspect in the murder mystery that's surely going to happen. Expensive hairdo. Over six inches tall. Looks freshly blow-dried. A professional job. Your hair looks lovely today, Mrs. Humdrum. Is that a new style? Thank you. I had it done yesterday. Dan didn't notice. They call it the Queen's Quaff. I don't know how you really say that word. I see it a lot, but I haven't spent the time to actually read it. Learn how you read it. Isn't quaff like drinking a drink? So maybe it's like... Oh, I don't know. I'm not even going to try. Well, it's certainly big and expensive. But I'm worth it, Dan. Who could put a price on that beautiful head of hair? You're not so bad yourself, hot stuff. Did you, did you leave your glasses at the hairdresser? You really are very good. The best. How long have you been solving mysteries? I'll ask the questions. Thank you. All right. A little bit of paint. Advanced mixing technique. Nice use of colors. Phthalo blue. Strong smell of turpentine. Expect you're finding it difficult to paint without your glasses? Oh no! I never wear them when I paint. I like to feel the canvas to interpret the colors. She's an incredible painter. You should have her paint you. Thanks, but I'll, I don't mix business with pleasure. What's next? Fingerprints? Polygraph test? It's like you're reading my mind. Alright. What are we finding? There was something here. I thought there was. Hey, I see that sticker. You give me that sticker. Give me, give me that sticker. Like, you say that there's something here, but... Oh, you have a rip in your pants pocket, lady. Snagged on something? That's a large hole. She must have caught it on something. Did you have trouble climbing down the ladder, the ladder, Mrs. Humdrum? Why, yes, I did. 
How on earth did you know? There's a tear in your pants pocket. Well, what do you know? I didn't realize these pants even had pockets. Have you figured it out yet? The suspense is killing me. Thirty times magnification, fixed eye cups. Do you often carry a pair of binoculars? She doesn't go anywhere without them. I presume you don't wear your glasses when you use the binoculars? Oh no, I can't get my eyes close enough to the eye cups. Hmm, I see. I feel like you know more about me than I do. All right, one more clue to find on this lady. Not about her feet, apparently. Something about the uh, canvas? No, we actually can't get over that far. What is it? What am I missing, madam? Oh, oh, something here. No, you said there was something here. I mean, you, you popped it up. Like, surely there's something here. Well, why did the indicator pop up? just ignore that for now I guess I mean the indicator is there like it's trying to tell me something oh, I guess it's trying to tell me about the pocket there we are now oh, you're at the uh, Greyhound racing you bet on Fleet Biscuit 12 to 1 to win risk taker bad odds Jenny had often snuck through the hole in the fence at Grubman's to watch the races. She couldn't understand why the dogs ran so hard. They were chasing the promise of food. What the adults were chasing was less relatable. Or maybe she could understand. Never mind, I misread it. She could understand why the dogs were running so hard. I notice you're a gambler, Mrs. Humdrum. You've been to the Greyhound races. That was yesterday. We always go to Grubman's on Wednesday. Did you take your binoculars with you? Of course. Those little critters are so far away. Can't keep up without my binoculars. Interesting. You are so thorough. Any more questions? I think we have everything I need to wrap this one up. Let's see. Um, we know that she had her glasses at Tuesday during the Tuesday book club. Um, where are Gail's glasses? There's a hole in Gail's right leg pocket. Gail doesn't wear glasses while painting. Gail removes her glasses when she uses the binoculars. Gail was at the Greyhound races on Tuesday night. She took her binoculars. Um, I think, uh, I think she took her glasses off at the hairdresser and then didn't pick them back up. Not just for bird watching. Gail was at the races last night. She had to remove her glasses to use the binoculars. Gail also had her hair cut recently. It's fluffy and big and could easily hide a small object. Her glasses are in her hair. It's not that she left. She pushed her glasses up onto her hair to look at the dogs and she lost her hair her glasses in her hair. Well, I knew the solution somehow. Solving a complex mystery like the case of the missing glasses was tough work. But now came the most satisfying part. Delivering the dramatic denouement. Um, let's just be a detective. Let's review the facts. One. Not only do you love your binoculars, 
You've come to depend on them for bird watching, greyhound watching, basically anything far away watching. That's true. I immediately sensed that the two optical devices, your binoculars and glasses, were incompatible. Thus, to use one, you had to remove the other. Fascinating. Fact two, yesterday you changed your hairstyle. I did. Though fun, it was also impractical, and so tall that it could easily conceal a small object. I see where this is going. Please don't interrupt. After much research, deliberation, and debate, I have concluded there is only one place the missing glasses could be. They've been on your head the whole time. Oh, so they are. Right there, on the top of my head. Incredible. What a talent. They're always in the last place you look, aren't they? Yeah, because you wouldn't keep looking if you've just found them. A master detective in the making. What would we have done without you? I am Gail, don't forget to pay the girl. Oh, of course. Silly me. You must be rewarded generously for all your hard work. One quarter? I don't spend it all in one place. Thanks. I'll do my best. Just kick her off the ledge right now. Whoa. <laughs> like you cracked your spine. What if I run fast into the... Oh. Okay, so it just won't let me go into the water. Of course. Alright. Anything at the end of the pier to see now that Mr. Humdrum is gone? No, nope, we almost just flung ourselves right off the ledge, but that's fine. Are you ready, Keith? Wow, what an amazing detective. Glasses on her head. Who could have guessed? Oh, you heard. What would we do without Master Investigator Jenny LeClue? I thought it was pretty cool, Jenny. And a whole nickel. You must be so excited. Yeah, that's more than her mom makes in a month. Come on, guys. Let's all just... Hey, Jenny, my grandma called. She wants her sweater back. Oh, how wonderful it was to joke around with friends. I've had enough of this. Uh-oh, we're really going to let her have it now. Priest? New? Always wearing her glasses? Brushed over her hair, brushed over her face? Let's just be regular mean, not real mean. Over application of makeup. Hair drawn over your face. Wear sunglasses even at night. You're trying to distract from something. A lazy eye, perhaps? What? No! How do you. Shut up, Jenny! You don't know anything! Wow, Jenny, that was cruel. Who even says something like that? Ah, oh, don't cry, Veronica. She's just a weirdo nobody. Jenny LaHoo? And, and the case of the missing friends? Uh, yeah. Good one, Veronica. Come on, let's get you home. Are you coming, Susie? Thanks for the coffee, Keith. And the extra sugar. Of course, it's... Nothing special at all and the same thing he does for everyone? Oh. Okay. See you around, Keith. Ah, we're a little jealous. Jealous of Susan? Well, that went well. Shall we? Er, uh, yeah. I've got no customers now, anyway. Yeah, we, dro we drove all your customers away. Sorry about that. <laughs> Nothing exciting ever happens here. I'm so tired of these simple cases. It's just show frustration, not anger. Hey, don't try to hit the birds. How am I supposed to become a real detective if there's no real crimes to solve? You help that old lady? You mean Mrs. Humdrum? Darn. 
Thanks, Keith. But it was stupid, and everyone knew it. Including your girlfriend. She's not my... And you really mustn't let them treat you like that. You should stick up for yourself. Ah, they don't mean anything. Sometimes you just gotta speak up and, st and say how you feel. Well, go ahead and let him know, Jenny. Let him know how you feel. Well, I... Can't just let people walk all over you, Keith. Okay. Let's go for careful judgment, not reckless abandon. It doesn't matter anyway. Nothing's going to change. Not in this ghost town. It's not so bad. Don't you ever wonder what it'd be like to live somewhere else? Oh, um, not really. Who am I kidding? There's nowhere else. Not for miles. Let's be, let's have forlorn hope that maybe there is. Shucks. I see practice is going well. Is your dad still pressuring you to play? Well, come on, Keith. You hate basketball. And tough love, but you're the worst player on the team. Not the worst. Well, on the bench, anyway. Why don't you just tell him that you don't want to play anymore? It's a Strasbury tradition. That's my point, Keith. This whole town is dead. Stuck in the past. Everyone is just doing what they're told without questioning why. Where's the ambition? The sense of adventure? Are we still talking about basketball? Let's go for the trick shot. Didn't work out. How's your mom? She seems distracted. Normally she's so focused on her job. I mean, it's understandable. It's been almost a year since, since your father died. And now she's planning to go away for the weekend and she won't tell me why. Yeah? Let me guess. Your dad is also going away for the weekend, Keith. She was definitely acting weird earlier. Maybe she's lonely. You know what? You're right. I am? She shouldn't be alone right now. Actually, your dad told me they were meeting in the library. We're going to go find some, going to need supplies. Two of Mr. Bean's finest, please. To go, of course. Here's my payment in full. That's a nickel. Put the rest on my tab. Thanks for the pep talk, Keith. You always know what to say to make me feel better. Last stone, do you want it? Let Keith throw it. You take it. You need the practice. Here goes nothing. You can do it, Keith. Bang! Three-pointer. Nice one, Keith. Maybe your luck's finally changing. Mystery of the Lake. Keith was an excellent listener, or maybe he just didn't speak much. Either way, Jenny really enjoyed their little talks. He was the only person who really seemed to understand her. Jenny biked briskly towards the library back on campus to surprise her mother. Nothing exciting ever happens here, she grumbled, unaware of the great adventure that lay in store just around the corner. All right, I think we'll actually uh, call the episode because it's just saved right now. It's been about 35 minutes, so I think that's plenty of time. Thanks for joining me. Hope you enjoyed it, and hope to see you again next time.